Hi everybody. When it comes to being a breakdown engineer, sometimes when I need to replace a part, particularly a zone valve or mid position valve, the installation hasn't left me any room to move the pipes out. They're soldered in and it's a real challenge. I and a few others know a very good way around this where I don't remove the valve at all, but I rebuild it. So stay tuned because along the way, I'm going to show you which tools you need, the sequence that's done, and more importantly, the spare parts, because they're not normally available. You have to know exactly which part, and I'm going to show you that. So before we begin, can you like and subscribe our channel and leave me a comment below so I can make more videos on the subjects that you ask mostly about. And we cover a lot of this on our two day course. Let's begin. Before we can begin, we need to have a few parts. Firstly, when we drain down, we need to turn all the valves into the manually open position. And I'll show you that in a minute. The second thing we need to have with us is the inhibitor. Now, F1, Furnox F1, is an inhibitor. We don't do that. That goes into a new system. We have to use F2 boiler silencer, as you can see on the videos. That's the one that we will now refill the system once we're finished. It's a lot stronger. It lubricates the pump and the plate to plate heat exchanger. So we need to have at least one. And if there are more than nine radiators or even eight radiators that are reasonable size, you might as well put two bottles in and make sure that it is well dosed. It's the biggest thing that you can do to stop rust and sludge into any system. And installers, I don't know, they just can't be bothered to spend 15 quid and protect the system. And they should do. But in this particular job, it's compulsory. The next thing we're going to need is a multimeter because we have to do the three-part electrical safety test. The reason being is that there's quite often a spur next to the boiler, as it should be, with a three-amp fuse. But quite often, again, in the airing cupboard, there will be another spur for the controls. So we need to turn both of them off, remove the fuse and then put a padlock on the open gate to make sure that there's no electricity going through. And then we use the multimeter to do our test. And the first thing we measure is always neutral to live should be zero volts because we've turned it off. But you also have to do earth to neutral. Now, beware, electricians, because many circuit breakers in the house might trip. So if you have a cheap sort of multimeter, it's highly likely to trip the whole house or at least that circuit. So make sure that whenever you do fault finding with a multimeter, it's going to be a good quality one. Next, we need to just loosen the screw with a fat head or the right thingy. Just turn that and then remove the top of the valve and we can see the earth wire is attached to the body and it's been done with rivets. The motor is only held on by this one screw and then we're going to twist to remove. All we need to do next is simply slide the motor towards the black flex and remove it and it'll still be attached and we'll get to that in a minute. This now shows two more screws that we have to remove. This one here and that one down the bottom as well so we can remove this particular housing. The next stage is going to be undoing the two nuts with the domes on top. Sorry engineers, I forgot. You need an eight millimeter spanner to undo 
that one and this one. These are diagonal, so it's a good idea to put a bit of black felt tip across the two, but you can't get it wrong anyway. So all we're going to do is just undo that and undo that one until we can remove the top. Once we've removed the four nuts that we've got on each corner, make a note which position this is. So it's in the six o'clock position. So we can simply remove that one, clean everything else, remove the old ring, O-ring, and then we've got a new one to fit back in its place. So we'll put that back into the six o'clock position and it lines up beautifully. And then we reassemble in reverse. One extra component we may need is this thing called a snubber, which is a resistor that stops stray electricity going in and switching the boiler off as and when it feels like it. So have a look at this video before you start, just in case you need this. It's not always necessary, but quite often this particular make suffers from this problem. The electricity even at low level, can actually trigger off the boiler to switch on and start working until the boiler thermostat switches off. And this could be set at 60 or even 75. So it's a complete waste of gas and makes the bills higher. So look out when you do your main electrical safety test, make sure that there are no stray electricities between earth and neutral. And the video will show you how to fit it and the best way to protect the system from now on. When it comes to tools, there's nothing special here. We just need a couple of slotted screwdrivers, crosshead screwdrivers, a cutter for the synchron motor and a wire stripper. Nothing special, nothing difficult. And of course, obviously, our multimeter will be in there as well. But as regards to tools, very simple, nothing extra, nothing special. We will also need a new Synchron motor. So make sure that it's the one compatible with this particular valve, because there are many that are undervalued and the wattage is very low and they will burn out. And the customer will quite rightly come back to you under guarantee and say, change it. So that's going to cost you a small fortune. So always double check, get the correct Synchron motor for the valve that you are using. This is the parts list that you need. And the motor is series three. So make sure that's the one you use. And the wires are blue. Don't use cheap orange ones because those motors are much weaker and they burn out after a few months. And as I said, the customer will come back to you and you'll have to replace the proper one free of charge. And that's very embarrassing and expensive. Our books are available from the website, mrcombi.com and they're sent first class, signed for. Price includes postage and packing and there is no VAT. And don't forget our special offer, you get both books for just £40. To book a place on the course, just go to the website, mrcombi.com and select training. Fill in the application form and then send it to us. Then go straight to the shop, scroll to the bottom and then you can enter your own credit or debit card or pay by PayPal. I'll get in touch with you to confirm your place and if there's any problems, I'll let you know. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel and take care.